The Goonies 2 for the NES is a very mysterious game from Konami, the incredible developer that brought us games like Contra, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Castlevania. While it features elements from the classic 1985 movie, The Goonies 2 had an all-new story. The menacing Fratelli family is back, and seeking revenge against the Goonies for sending them to jail. They've kidnapped all of the Goonies except for Mikey, the character played by a young Sean Astin in the movie. Not only that, but they've also abducted the Goonies' newest member, a mermaid named Annie. This fever dream plot was never a real movie. Konami dreamed up an insane sequel as the premise for this game. But why would Konami make a sequel instead of just adapting the plot of the awesome movie? We didn't know it at the time in North America, but Konami did make a game based on the Goonies movie. It was just exclusively released in Japan. The game did appear in US arcades inside PlayChoice 10 machines, which were essentially arcade cabinets that let you put in quarters to rent time playing a selection of 10 different NES games. I know that whenever I played a PlayChoice 10 machine, I usually just played Punch-Out and would enter the code to go right to the dream fight with Tyson. I never even noticed a Goonies game. I wish I knew why Konami didn't release their Goonies game in other regions. I have the original Famicom cartridge, and the entire game is in English. They didn't even need to translate it. It's even more confusing that they would release the sequel outside of Japan. If the original was popular enough to spawn a sequel, why not release it in the US where the Goonies movie was very popular? Why instead release the sequel over two years after the movie's release? The original Goonies game is actually pretty fun, although it's very short and mostly linear. The Goonies 2, however, features a massive open world to explore. You'll find items that improve your character, and also other ones that unlock new parts of the game world. That's right, this is a Metroidvania game. It's very impressive for a title first released back in 1987. This is a Metroidvania game that actually predates Castlevania 2, it's pretty crazy to think that the Goonies were doing Metroidvania before Castlevania was. This game even features a map screen, something that's conspicuously absent from older Metroidvania titles. The Goonies 2 also features a hybrid type gameplay. For most of the game, you're controlling Mikey through the typical side-scrolling areas, navigating moving platforms, slippery ice, fiery lava, and bottomless pitfalls. Whenever you enter a door, however, the game becomes a point-and-click adventure game, similar to NES classics like Shadowgate or Deja Vu, although much more basic. These point-and-click segments are the game's weakest parts, but they do break up the action, and discovering the hidden secrets within is exciting. All you really need to do to explore these rooms is to first hit the back wall with your fist, hammer the back wall, the ceiling, and the floor, and if that doesn't do anything, finally try your glasses before moving on. If you perform these actions in every room, you'll be able to find every single item except for one. For some strange reason, the only way to get the candle is to punch an old lady in the face five times. As far as I know, there are no hidden clues within the game that even suggest that the only way to get the candle is through brutally assaulting the elderly. The only way I found out about the candle as a kid was to write a letter to Nintendo Power Magazine. My mom definitely wasn't going to let me call them on the phone. Despite some cryptic puzzles, the game is actually a lot of fun. Mikey controls well, the environments are varied, and the soundtrack is great. It even features a chiptune rendition of the Cindy Lauper song from the movie. 
Unfortunately, the game hasn't been re-released on any modern platforms. You'll have to track down an original NES cartridge if you want to play an official version. The game is considered to be a cult classic, and when IGN released their list of the top 100 NES games of all time, they put The Goonies 2 at number 75. Modern gamers will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. The game's massive world with its twists and turns will easily get you lost, there are hidden doors in impossible to find locations, and there are plenty of instant death hazards. But what if I told you how to find every hidden item so you'll always have what you need? What if I told you a secret trick to reveal hidden doors before finding the glasses item? And what if I told you how to rescue all of the kidnapped Goonies and their mermaid friend Annie? On today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we are doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Let's get started. Alright, The Goonies 2. We're going to start up a new game, and in The Goonies 2 we play as Mikey, the character played by Sean Astin in the movie. Sean Astin, of course, would go on to play Rudy and then Sam in The Lord of the Rings. We're going to go in the first door by pressing up, and then we need to take the hammer. The hammer is an extremely important item that we'll need to use to reveal all kinds of secrets, so don't miss it. In this next room, we can take a key ring, and I'm going to go in the door in front of us just to show you that room. There was a hole in the ceiling there. That's going to come up later. There was also a safe in that room. Don't worry about opening any safes unless you reveal them with the hammer or the glasses, which we will find later. Right now, we got two keys. And for each key ring we find, we will increase our maximum keys by two. We'll need those to open up safes and to save our Goonie friends. Make your way to the left here. Right now we have the yo-yo as our primary weapon, but in this door, we can find a slingshot. The slingshot has a limited number of uses, but it has very good range. So I'm going to equip it right away we're going to get a better weapon, the boomerang, in not too long, so I'm not very worried about running out of the slingshot. In this next room, we can find a magic locator device, which is going to tell us where one of the goonies is on our map. But more importantly, if we go through the door, we will exit into a different area. So we kind of warped to the other side of the game. There's a front and a back map, and now we're on the back map. We want to climb up this ladder over here on the right. Up here at the top, we're going to find our first Goonie. So make your way into this door. Punch the back wall, and that's going to give us a bomb box. That will allow us to use bombs as a secondary weapon. In this room, we're going to hammer the back wall and then go through the door that appears. And here's Chunk. Chunk was played by Jeff Cohen, and there aren't actually names assigned to the characters in this game, so I'm just kind of assuming which ones are which. But I did want to show that a lot of the Goonies had a pretty good acting career after the movie, and I found that very interesting. I'm going to have the actor data for all of the different Goonies as we save them. Once you've rescued Chunk, we're going to make our way back the way we came, but before we go into the door that we entered this area from, we are going to take a quick diversion. Down here, we can cross some moving platforms and go up into this door, where we will find a firebox when we hit the wall. The firebox gives us access to Molotov cocktails, 
and we can switch between those and the bombs on the start menu. The bombs are more important than the Molotov cocktails. They can be used to reveal secret rooms in several locations. So the Molotovs are more of a weapon, and the bombs have a secondary use. So I'm going to switch to Molotovs for now. You can use them by pressing up and B. Now this is one of those confusing rooms. You may have noticed that the picture of Mikey in the lower left corner was facing us. And that means that up and down are reversed for some reason. It's confusing, but you know, look out for that. Once you get into this room, make your way down the ladder. And we want to jump onto this moving platform and head on to the left. Inside this door, we see an old man who says that we have found a warp zone. And when we go through the door on the back, we are indeed in a totally different area. These red caves are kind of like a hub world. We can access a lot of areas from here. Up this vine, we will come into a room where we can punch the wall and find the transceiver. The transceiver is not a very important item, but we are going to use it later. In this room, we find the infamous old lady that we need to punch for the candle. So hit her five times. I don't know why they couldn't have just let you get it after you punched her the first time. I don't know what kind of sadistic person you have to be to go around just punching every character you see five times. That's the only character that gives you anything for punching. We can also exit that room on another side and it takes us to a different orange-brown cavern. In this door, we can use the candle we just found and go forward, use the candle again. There's a magic locator device, which that'll tell us where one of the goonies is, but whatever. Then we're gonna use the candle again in this room and punch the back wall to find a key holder which is going to increase our maximum keys to four. And this room has Konami Man in it. Konami Man will refill our health entirely. Never ever punch Konami Man. If you punch Konami Man, he'll never fill up your health again. And we're going to run into him several times in the game. Konami Man is actually like a mascot for Konami. He even had his own game series called YY World, which actually featured a lot of Konami characters, but he's the one that you start as. Well, you can actually be him or Konami Woman, another character that exists. I think that she appears in this game. They call the other character that will find Ambassador Konami, but I kind of think it actually might be Konami Woman. It's just a theory I have. Make your way up the vines all the way over here on the left side of the red cavern. And in this room, we are going to perform a trick. Once the lights are on, we're going to go to our tool menu, press B, and then quickly press A. If we do it correctly, a door will appear. And then we can take the helmet, and that's an item we're going to be very happy to have when we go to the ice area very soon. Now, normally what happens when you use the transceiver is you get a tip like this one from Data. But, whenever you switch over to that second menu of tools by pressing B, if you press A very quickly, we trick the game into thinking we have the glasses item, which we don't actually have yet. If you mess the trick up, you can just keep trying it. But the next thing we need to do is go into this room down this vine here and enter the ice area. In the ice area, there are falling icicles, so we will be happy that we have the helmet, which will protect us from them. We wanna make our way to a door that's all the way to the right in the bottom of this area. So there it is right there, and you can see how that icicle just bounced right off my head. I'm gonna use my candle and go through the door. In this room, hammer the back wall, and we'll find a safe. And then we can use a key, and now we have the glasses, and we don't have to do that transceiver trick anymore. And over in the room on the right, 
we can get a boomerang, which is a new weapon. And yeah, I have no idea what's going on with that guy. And then just make your way back the way that you came. And we'll equip the boomerang. The boomerang is awesome. You can shoot it in eight different directions, although be careful not to shoot it upwards when you're standing on the ground, or you'll use a molotov or a bomb instead. You can send it downwards, at an angle. Yeah, the boomerang is great. It also has very good range. And it has unlimited usage. So we now have that for the rest of the game, unless we run into an iron mask enemy which can steal it from us. So we do need to be cautious of that. Head back into the door that we entered the area through. We'll use our candle and go through this door back to the red caves. I'm going to wait for this waterfall before I jump onto the platform, and we can use our boomerang to shoot at this scorpion enemy, which is technically called a scoopy. Over here we'll meet up with Jake Fratelli. He's the one in the movie that they bust out of jail at the beginning and is always trying to sing. He can't actually be killed, but you can stun him by hitting him with your boomerang. Or he might just jump off a cliff, he does that a lot. He'll be back though, don't worry, we'll see Jake again. Make your way to the right here, carefully jumping over these pits. We'll ride this platform over to the door. In this room, we want to go to the right and then down out of that room so that we can exit into the ice area. It's a little bit tricky, there's not actually a door that you can see there. You just have to assume it's behind you. In this room, we can use our hammer to reveal a secret door in the back wall, and we will rescue Steph. Steph was played by Martha Plimpton, who was actually the mother on Raising Hope. Now that she has been rescued, you can see that whenever you save the Goonies, you get an extra bar of health and it refills your health entirely. So it is important to save them for more than just winning the game, which you do need to save all six Goonies to complete the game. Once we've saved Steph and exited the ice area, we want to come back the way that we came through here. Like I said before, this red cavern is sort of a hub area that we'll be able to use to access a lot of different ones. Use my boomerang to knock out Jake Fratelli. And then I'm going to head up this very long vine. And up here, that's the room where we found the candle. So that'll help you get your bearings. We're going to jump onto this platform and head over to the right. Over here, we can actually find a secret door. So wait for this platform to be coming back from the left. And right here, press up. And inside, we'll find Konami Man, who will fill up your health. Now, whenever we exit this, I always end up taking some damage from that waterfall. So if you're barely damaged at all, you might not want to go in there. But if you've taken a lot of hits, Konami Man can really save you. If you lose all your lives in this game, you can continue back like right where you were, but you'll lose all of your keys and ammunition. We're going to use this door to transport ourselves to this area. This orange cavern connects to the bridge. And the bridge is going to take us to a different area on the other side of the map. But over here, we can use a bomb to reveal a secret door. You need to put it precisely in this location. So take a look at where I dropped that bomb. And inside, we're going to find a very useful item the hyper shoes. I'm going to equip those right away and I'm also going to equip my slingshot because here's that iron mask enemy that can steal your boomerang. Do not shoot it with the boomerang. You want to use your slingshot here. If you shoot the iron mask with the boomerang or if you get hit by the iron mask you will lose that boomerang. You can find it again in that same room in the ice area. Whew, okay, that guy almost got me. Whoa. Okay. But you need to be extremely careful crossing the bridge. That's the only area where those iron masks appear. Now we're in a purple cavern, and we want to go down the vines 
and come up to this pink door. Inside here we can use our candle and we can find another one of those Goonie locator devices. That's the only thing in here. So we're just gonna move on from this room. That is hardly a mandatory item to find. Don't really need it for anything. These skeleton guys, which are technically called Skeller Wings, are very vulnerable to the bomb weapon. So keep that in mind whenever you see them. But you do want to save a bomb or two to enter some hidden doors. And speaking of, there's a hidden one on this platform. By just pressing up, we can enter. And it will lead us to Konami Man, which refills our health again. Pretty good. In this room, we can use our hammer to reveal a secret door and go through that door and through another one and it will reveal a very important area, the Green Caverns. We'll find a lot of important items here in the Green Caverns, so it is critical to know how to get here. Watch out for this Scoopy enemy and try to avoid the water that comes out of those geysers. It can damage you right now, but we will find an item later that will protect us from it. Hitting the back wall here will give us a fire box, which will add 5 to our maximum Molotov cocktails, giving us a grand total of 10 right now. Head up this vine and then make your way back to the left. You definitely don't want to mess around with the Skeller wing enemies unless you're going to use bombs on them. It takes like a million hits from the boomerang or another weapon to defeat them. Head on down here to the left. And we want to go left, then forward. And in this room, we're going to use the hammer. And in this room, we will use the glasses. Then you need to use a key, and we can finally get the diving suit. The diving suit is a mandatory item that we will need to access the undersea areas in the game. So that is a very, very important one. Head on back to the right and down this vine. And at the bottom we'll enter this door. We want to head right and then punch the back wall in this room to get a bomb box. And that's going to give us 10 bombs now. So we have 10 bombs and 10 molotovs right now. Not too bad. The maximum for either will be 20, so there's two more of each box to find. All the way over here on the left, we can use our hammer to open up the back wall and find a safe. And inside that safe, we'll find a waterproof coat. The waterproof coat will protect us from the water that spits out of those geysers in this area, and it will also protect us from the waterfalls in the red cavern. So that's not a bad item to have for sure. Head back the way that you came. We still haven't visited the top floor of the green caverns, so we need to climb up this vine that we see here that's guarded by that Scoopy. Go on up the vine and make your way to the left. We currently don't have any keys. Well, good thing that in this door over here, we can find a key ring. Go to the right, we need to use our hammer on the back wall to reveal a secret door and then hit the wall here. And there it is. Now we went from zero keys to six. Not bad. We're going to need one of those keys very soon as we make our way all the way to the left. We don't take damage from those anymore so we don't have to worry about that water. And over here, we'll enter the final door for the green cavern. And in this room over here, we can use our glasses, which reveals our third Goonie rescue. This time, it's Brand. Crazy that Brand is played by Josh Brolin, who is Thanos in the Marvel movies. How crazy is that? Once he's rescued, you can see that we now have five energy bars, so we're getting to be very powerful. And we can just jump over that part where the door is and make your way back down the vine. We don't have anything left to do here in the green caverns, so we are going to go back the way that we came. 
So head over to the right and into this door. And of course, this is going to take us back to the purple caverns. So what do we need to do now? Well, we found that diving suit. We just need to find the water that we have to access. The water is actually all the way back in that ice area through the door where we found the boomerang and the glasses. So we need to backtrack across the purple caverns and across the bridge. Now remember to unequip your boomerang because of the iron mask enemies. If they hit you or you hit it... Oh, okay, he got me. All right, we lost the boomerang. But it's not as big of a disaster this time. We're actually headed to the room where the boomerang is hidden, so we can find another one there and replace it. I am running out of slingshot, so I'm going to switch back to the yo-yo. This is one of the oldest games I have ever seen where the main character fights with a yo-yo. I challenge you to find an older game than this where the yo-yo is the weapon. Uh, put it in the comments if you know of one. Many later games used yo-yos as weapons like Star Tropics, Earthbound, even Kirby fought with a yo-yo sometimes. But this seems to be one of the first, if not the first, games where the protagonist fights with a yo-yo. Pretty cool. I'm glad that we at least brought a weapon with us this time. In the first game, we only brought karate, so... Yeah, nice upgrade with the yo-yo here, Mikey. Good idea. Through this door, we'll use our candle so we can see where we're going. We'll be back at that ice area. Make your way down the ladder. We're gonna head all the way to the right and enter the door that we find there. We've been in this door before. Now, if you ever lose your boomerang like I did, we can get a replacement, so we're gonna use our candle, go forward, and then to the right, take the boomerang. Then we wanna head over to the left, and there's the water, so use the diving suit, and suddenly we are under the sea. Now, we wanna plant a bomb over in this crevice. That makes a hidden door appear, and inside, we'll get an extra life. This is one of the only locations where you can get an extra life, and that monster will not give you another one, so don't try to go in there and get more lives. It doesn't work. Head down this pipe and make your way over to the left, where we will find another door. This is a very important adventure scene. Punch the back wall here to get the ladder, and then take the door on the left, punch the back wall to get a bomb box, which will max our bombs up to 15. And then in the far right room, we can use the hammer on the ceiling to open up a hole, and you can see what that ladder we just got does. It allows us to access holes in the ceiling or floor. Up here we'll find our fourth Goonie, this one is Mouth, played by Corey Feldman, who was certainly unforgettable in Stand By Me and The Lost Boys. Once you've rescued Mouth, make your way back the way that you came up the pipe, but this time we're going to head over to the right. Watch out for this jellyfish and this shark enemy, which is technically called a sharky, very creative and enter this room. We can hit the back wall to get some more keys. So now we can hold eight keys. We're going to use our diving suit in the room on the left and head down this pipe. And over here, we can find an optional item, but a useful one for sure. Go to the room on the left and this weird alien guy will give you the jumping shoes. Which actually, when we used the transceiver earlier, Data kind of mentioned that this alien guy had stolen his jump shoes. So, that's where they actually came from. Once you have those, there isn't anything else you need to get in this area, so just head back the way you came, go through the door to the right, 
and use the diving suit to re-enter the darker ocean area. The ladder was the last key item that we needed to find, so now there is no part of the game that is off limits to us. We simply need to find the other two goonies, although there will be a few more optional items that we'll be able to pick up before the end of the game. We'll see what these jumping shoes can do. And before there was no way we'd be able to make that jump up to this ledge, but now we can. Typically I still prefer to use the hyper shoes most of the time, but the jumping shoes are something you can switch on in certain areas. Right here we can just jump all the way up to that ledge. We will go back through the door that we came through. This one will take us back to the red caverns. And once we get in there, I'm going to switch back to my hyper shoes. I do prefer them. And now we don't have to worry about taking damage from these waterfalls. And we also don't have to ride those platforms. We can just use the jumping shoes to get up on this ledge. Make your way up this vine. And we're going to enter this door, which will take us back towards the beginning of the game. Get onto this platform and make your way to the right. Make your way up this ladder. And what we are trying to do now is head back to that area in the upper house where we found our first goonie, Chunk. I switched back to my hyper shoes so I can move quickly to the left and we're going to go through this door and on the other side we want to climb up the ladder. Now last time we climbed up this ladder and headed to the right, but this time we want to head over to the left. There's a door all the way over here on the left side that contains a warp zone. We couldn't actually use this warp zone before though. We didn't have the ladder. So we can hit a hole in the ceiling with our hammer, climb up the ladder, go through the door on the left, and enter the fire zone. The fire zone is a bit different from the areas we've been to before. You can just take a big leap off to the right. And you see that horizontally moving platform? On the far right side of it is a hidden door that contains Konami Man. Make sure to hold left as you come out of the door so that you can catch this platform. Otherwise you'll have to climb back up onto the one from the right. In this door, we can use our hammer to hit the ceiling and then of course we'll need the ladder to climb up and we've found data data is kind of hard to believe it's the same guy from indiana jones in the temple of doom that played short round i had no idea before i looked this up but now that i see it it seems so obvious Once Data has been rescued, we only have one Goonie left to save. Your Molotov cocktails will make short work of these weird unicorn dragon enemies, which are called Conagons. Head up the vine over on the left, and we can use our jump shoes here to make this part a bit easier. Navigate these platforms, and head through the door on the right. Inside we will find yet another warp zone. And if we take a quick detour to the room on the right, we'll meet Ambassador Konami. She tells us we need to help all six Goonies before we can rescue Annie. Yeah, we could have probably figured that out by reading the instruction manual, Ambassador Konami. Thanks for the help. That's her only appearance in the entire game. What a waste. You'll notice that the Molotov Cocktails are very effective against these Knights in Armor, which take just a ton of hits from the Boomerang. Head through this door down in the lower right. Inside you'll find the old man that tells you it's a warp zone, but we don't actually want to warp in here. We just want to head to this empty-ish room and punch the wall to get another bomb box. 
then we need to come back to this room and actually use our glasses to be able to go out the same way that we came in. It's kind of confusing. It almost seems like a one-way door if you don't figure that out. Now we have maximum bombs. There will be no more bomb boxes in the game. Down here, we can go through this door. And uh, the bombs are very effective against this skeleton guy. Head on in. There's the last Goonie locator device. And then we can go through to this area with an orange background. Make your way across to the right, and I'm going to start liberally using my Molotov cocktails and bombs, because we are getting very close to the end of the game. Make sure you save at least one bomb though, because there is another secret coming up that you're going to need a bomb to reveal. Climb up this ladder, jump over to the left, and climb up the next ladder that you see. Over here we can use our jump shoes. If we didn't have them, we'd have to go around to the right. But we can use the jump shoes as a small shortcut here. Head over to the left, and we're going to climb up this ladder into this odd space in the middle of the level. This is where we need to use a bomb to reveal a secret door. Inside, we will find another extra life. This is only the second extra life in the entire game, and it's also the last one. They are very rare. Head over to the left and use your jump shoes to get up onto this ledge. Inside, we'll need to use the hammer on the ceiling. Then we'll use our ladder to climb up. And in the next room, we're going to use the glasses which will reveal a safe. Using a key on the safe will get us the bulletproof vest. And the bulletproof vest is an awesome item. It's definitely not mandatory, but it doesn't just protect Mikey from bullets. No, it's way better than that. It prevents 50% of all damage. So if you get hit by something, you'll take half the damage you would have taken before. Sometimes when you hit an enemy, you won't take damage at all when you're wearing the bulletproof vest. It's quite handy. Once you have it, you want to head down and then make your way to the left. There's another door over here that we want to enter. This one, we need to use the hammer on the floor. Use the ladder to climb down and go through the door on the right to reveal another warp zone. This one is just a water area, so use your diving suit, make your way to the left, and up in the pipe in the ceiling. Watch out for the sharky. Up here we'll find a door at a dead end, but it's a very important door. Inside on the right, we will find Andy, the final goonie. Andy was played by Carrie Green from other movies like Summer Rental and Three for the Road. She was the romantic lead in the movie, and once Andy has been saved, she is the sixth and final Goonie. Now all we need to do is rescue Annie. Head back the way we came, take the ladder out of the ceiling, and head back. We need to go a decent distance to find Annie, and there are a couple more fireboxes that we haven't picked up yet. It's nice to be able to have the full health bar at the top of the screen, with all eight units intact. Head up these ladders and make your way to the right. We're going to go back down the ladder and head to the left the way that we came before. So make your way across to the left. Watch out for Pipsqueak for Telly. There apparently are many of him. And go down this ladder on the far left. Head across the gap here. I am going to use my jumping shoes to make this a little bit easier. And just stay on the top. I, can, I like to use Molotov cocktails on these big suits of armor. 
and we're going to go into this door. Use your glasses to reveal a hidden door and it will take us to the other side of the map, the back. As we make our way across the map to the left, I just have to keep wondering one thing. Why a mermaid? What made Konami introduce a random mermaid character into the Goonies? It doesn't make a lot of sense. There were some fantastical elements in the Goonies movie, but they all seemed... possible. I don't know why they didn't just have Sloth be the one that they were saving at the end. Sloth was definitely their friend in the movie at the end. Use your hammer in here on the floor and take a ladder down to the bottom. Once you get down there, you just want to punch the back wall and that will get us Firebox number three. We now have a maximum of 15 Molotovs and I've been using them a lot, so it's going to be nice to have a nice refill on those. Once you have them, make your way back to the right. Now that we found that third firebox, the only remaining item that we haven't collected is the fourth and final firebox. Before we do that, however, we can head all the way to the right, and right at the end of this horizontal moving platform is a hidden door with Konami Man inside. He looks pretty weird against that background, like he's somewhat invisible. Once you've met with Konami Man, we're going to head back up the ladder and go through the door behind this suit of armor enemy. That will take us back the way that we came. I'm going to use some more of my Molotovs. We're headed to pick up another firebox, so we might as well use them as much as we can. Use the glasses in this room to switch back to the front side. And make your way to the left. Navigate some moving platforms and watch out for this bat enemy, which is technically called a happy. And yeah, don't ask me who named these enemies, it wasn't me. These platforms that move up and down if you jump off of them while they're in the upward movement, you'll gain some extra momentum. Down here we can switch over to this area, which has like a peachy orange color to it. Climb up this ladder and make your way over to the left. There's a door here in the upper corner that we need to get to. Inside we'll meet the warp zone. And that takes us all the way back to the fire zone. And we need to head back the way we came through here. So just cross over the entire fire zone. I know that's easier said than done. The fire zone is one of the more dangerous areas in the game. You want to stay in the upper part of the platforms when possible so that the lava bursts don't hit you. And don't forget there's a hidden Konami man on this platform here if you want to refill your health on the way back through. Make sure to hold left if you don't want to fall off of the platform like I did there. Climb up the vine, and you'll need to use these platforms to ascend. There's only two more screens to get through here in the fire zone, so just climb up this platform, use that extra upwards momentum, and you can just jump across easily here. Alright, go forward. We need to hammer the floor so we can go back the way that we came before we came through the ceiling. And this will take us back to that gray area with the orange bricks. What we're doing right now is making our way back to the very beginning of the game you may remember right after we got the hammer, we picked up our first key ring and I showed you a room with a hole in the ceiling. That's where we're headed to right now. We didn't have the ladder back then, but we have the ladder now. So we're going to be able to climb through that hole in the ceiling and it's going to take us to a new area, the attic. Up here we can use the candle so we can see. And on the other side of the door on the right, is a warp zone. 
use your jump shoes once you get here into the attic. That will make it easy to get up to this ladder. And continue to use them to climb up onto this ladder and then make your way to the door in the lower right of this room. The attic is a much larger area than this, but there isn't anything else for us to find in here, so we just want to enter this door and cross into the next area. It looks like we just came from here, but we're actually now on the far right side of the map. Over here in this door on the left, we can use our glasses to open a hole in the floor, Kind of a strange use of the glasses, but we can go down the ladder and find the fourth and final firebox. With that, we now have 100% of the items. Make your way across the gaps on the bottom and head over to the right. We want to jump up onto this ledge and enter this door. In here we can use the candle so we can see. And then we just need to use our hammer to hit the back wall and reveal a door, which will take us to the other side. From here we just need to make our way to the left and down the ladder on the far left side. Over here we can just cut across to the right and take the ladder at the very bottom. In this room, we're on the other side of the basement area from the beginning of the game. And we just need to get up to the door on the top ledge. The door on the bottom is a trick. There's nothing good down there for us. This is the way to go. Use the candle in this room to see. And we can just hammer that back wall to find another door. In here we just want to cross over to the next door. And inside there we're going to find a place to use our diving suit. Of course, Annie would be hidden behind some water. It only makes sense. She's a mermaid. Head down to the only door in this area, and inside we can use a key to rescue Annie and complete the game. We've done it. We've beaten the Goonies too. All we can do now is sit back Relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Is Annie topless? And did she have a featureless body? Is she maybe a little bit more fish than human? These are questions we'll probably never know the answer to. Well, I hope this video was able to help you defeat the Fratellis and finally return peace to Goon Docks. If it did, make sure to give it a like and be sure to subscribe for more videos, because there will always be more featureless mermaids for us to save, and that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.